Hey guys, what's up? And welcome back to another week of the Golden Oldies. Today we are going to be talking about Rahab. Rahab was a sinful woman. People stereotyped her. They didn't think that she was able to be used by the Lord. But anyone can be used by the Lord, no matter their past. And that's what we're going to talk about today. If you were here last week, you should remember talking about genealogy. Well, Rahab is actually in the line of Jesus Christ. Her and Salmon were the parents of Boaz, and Ruth and Boaz are like the grandparents of King David, which as we learned last week, King David is in the line of Jesus Christ. So that's really neat. And it's cool to know that she actually was in the line of that. But because she was sinful, people stereotyped her as worthless. How would you describe what it means to be stereotyped? When we stereotype others, we are assuming that they act or sound a certain way just because of the way they look or because of something that they did. Like we talked about before, Rahab was looked at by others as a useless prostitute who can't be helpful to anyone, let alone God. Well, let's ask a few questions and let's reflect on that. Does it hurt to be stereotyped? Next, do you think that Jesus stereotypes us? Do you think that Jesus stereotyped Rahab for being a sinful woman? The Bible tells us that we can be used no matter our past. Rahab, even though she was stereotyped, she was still used by the Lord. She hosted two Israelite spies whenever Joshua sent them into the Promised Land to do a recon mission, which we'll talk about in a second. Now I'm going to ask you guys another question. Have you ever been surprised because someone did something good when you expected them to do something bad? Now that we have talked about the historical context, we are going to go ahead and open up our Bibles and read Joshua 2. Students, take a break, read that as a group, and then come back for some questions. What a crazy story. I love the story of Rahab. It's really encouraging to see how someone who is super stereotyped and no one thought that she could do good did something and she did it for God. So I'm gonna ask you guys some questions. First, I'm gonna ask you these two questions. The first question is, who were the main characters in Joshua 2? And the second question, according to verses 10 through 11, so go back and read those verses, what had the people of Jericho heard about the Lord? The main characters of Joshua 2, let's talk about that. So I'm sure most of you said Rahab or Joshua, or maybe even the two spies. I think any of those work. They all really played important parts in this story. Um, and then the second question that I asked you guys, according to verses 10 through 11, what had the people of Jericho heard about the Lord? Well, they had heard things that he did, like parting the waters for the Red Sea. Um, and these people were fearful of the Lord when they realized that he was the God of the world. So now that we know those two questions, let's go ahead and move on to two more questions. The first one is, why did Joshua send the spies to Jericho? And the second one is, why did Rahab decide to help the spies? Go ahead and answer those and we'll be back. Just like we talked about before, Joshua sent the spies to Jericho so that way they could do a recon mission or seek out what was going on and come back and tell Joshua what they found. And then Rahab decided to help the spies, well, because her and the rest of the people were too scared to fight against the Israelites. They needed someone to help them. And also Rahab wanted to help them because she had made a, a deal with them um, where they had promised to keep her family safe in return. Let's move on to two more questions. Rahab had to lie to protect the spies. Students, is there ever an appropriate time to lie? Second question, Rahab was not a good church girl, yet she helped the spies who were sent from the Lord. Sometimes when we fall into sin, we want to hide from God rather than come to Him. Discuss why we always need to come to God and partner with God, even when we fall short. Take some time, talk about these, and we'll be right back.
All right, students, obviously lying is a sin, but God is above sin. And whenever we participate in that, he can still turn it around and use it for good. Obviously, I am not saying, go ahead and lie. It's okay, God will recover for you. No, he just took this situation and turned it around to be used for him. So I have another two questions. Rahab was instructed to hang a red cord on her window, just like we heard in the story, to protect her family. What is symbolic about the scarlet cord? And the second question, Rahab is a sinful woman, yet the Lord had favor on her. Can you think of another person in the Bible that was sinful and yet the Lord saved them? I actually love that first question about the scarlet cord because when I hear it, I immediately think of the story of the Passover. If you're unfamiliar, let me explain. So during the Passover, um, the Lord instructed believers to sacrifice lamb and put the blood mark on their door. So that way the spirit would pass over them and not kill their firstborn child. Maybe you thought about the blood of Jesus Christ whenever you heard of the scarlet cord. There are plenty of other things that you could think of when you hear about the scarlet cord, but those are just a few. The second question I asked was talking about if the Lord has had any favor on any other sinful people throughout the Bible. Um, yes, there are so many people that the Lord has had favor upon and ha that he has saved them. And some of those people could be Paul, Matthew, David, Moses. There's so many people in the Bible. And I'm sure that you guys had some answers that I didn't say. Now that we're done talking about that, I have two more questions for you guys. And it's actually our last two questions of the day. One, how does the salvation of Rahab and her family reveal the gospel? And two, people let their reputations define them. If a friend has a bad reputation, then how would you encourage them to not let their past define them? Talk about those and we'll be back. So now that we've had time to talk about those questions, I wanna walk through them with you. That first question, how does salvation of Rahab and her family reveal the gospel? Well, like we see in the story, God cares about us no matter what we do and where we come from. His offer to salvation is for everyone, even the people that sin, even the people that struggle worse than others maybe. God is still loving and his grace expands to all of us. The other question, if you have a friend who has a bad reputation and maybe they're just struggling, how can you encourage them to not let those struggles and their past define them? Well, students, we see a lot of time in the Bible that God has taken people who struggle and used them for his glory. Just like in this story, there are other times in the Bible that God's grace extended out to the people. So another example of this is in the New Testament, actually, when we learn about Saul. Saul was murdering Christians because of their beliefs, but God took him, turned him into Paul, and had him actually save people. Um, and that's just a really cool thing that God does, is he sees us in our weakest, he sees us in the things that we are doing that are bad, and he takes that and turns it into his glory. That's such a sweet thing. Rahab was just like anyone else. She was a sinner. The Lord still saw her as worthy and able to be used by him. All of us are worthy, all of us are able, and the Lord doesn't look at us for our stereotypes because of what we struggle with. I want you guys to be encouraged by that. And I want you guys to share that with others. Hey, it's okay that you're struggling. You can get past this. The Lord still sees you. The Lord still values you. And he still thinks that you are worthy. In fact, he knows you're worthy. This is week five of the Golden Oldies. And I'll see you guys next week.